Hi, now let us kick start our class 11 syllabus with the first topic that is diversity of life. You know we are dealing with biology so we will have to deal with something living and when we talk about something living we have millions and millions of species which include the plants, which include the animals, which include the viruses and what not to say. There are so many species and you can imagine how difficult it would be if you have to study and you don't have any information regarding an organism and you have to study it on your own. Now. Thanks to the history and thanks to various scientists which came in the way and various uh, those inquisitive minds who have studied different organisms in great depth and coined a term known as classification. Now when we talk about diversity of life, we are dealing with a study that is known as systematics. Now I introduced you to diversity of life saying that there are millions and millions of species. When we have to study each species, when we have to study each organism, let's say, if the each organism is to be studied in detail, there are certain characteristics that we are already aware of thanks to our knowledge, our uh, basic uh, knowledge and awareness that we have all that is again all thanks to those people who have pioneered in the studies of these fields. So we have an idea that because this is uh, motile so it cannot be plant because this is flying it could be categorized into bird or some sort of insect it could be. So there is a basic understanding that lies behind our study of an individual organism. Earlier in the earlier centuries, like earlier in the past, what was there? The problem of classification persisted. It was there and slowly and steadily few pioneers came in the field of uh, study of organisms and devised the terms like systematics. They altogether started a new study known as uh, classification, taxonomy. Later on it took another fold and a turn that uh, it brought into its ambit the evolutionary relationships. And slowly and steadily we are having a five kingdom classification in our hands which tells us which one is a plant, which organism belongs to the kingdom animal layer, which uh, organism is an acellular organism that is it is a virus and we have entire knowledge about the various organisms which are present and uh, supposedly you go out somewhere in the wilds and find an organism you can very clearly from your understanding figure out that whether it is a frog whether it is a snake it is a reptile it is a bird that is all thanks to the knowledge that you have gained through your understanding of different uh, fields of biology and one we are going to study now is that of system systematics. So, first of all we have few terms and we have to understand those terms in uh, this lesson. One is what is systematics? Second is why do we study classification? All that I spoke right now. Why do we study classification? Again you have an answer by now that we study classification so that it is easier for us to study a particular organism in pretext of its position in species or the kingdom that we come across. Then we have uh, the simple question that there are three terms that you have over here. One is systematics, other is classification and the last one is taxonomy. How they are interrelated or how are they different? You know when we study this for our ease we usually say that systematics and taxonomy and classification they are nothing but uh, similar terms that we are using but they are different. Uh, according to a scientist known as Simpson that uh, he termed that systematics is different around in 1960s, 61 I would say rather precisely 1961. He came forward with the idea that this term and this term is different because earlier it was used interchangeably but uh, that person came and he told that these terms are different. Now for that you need to know what uh, all these terms are. First of all what is systematics? See the systematics is the umbrella term. So when we say umbrella term it refers to the entire study like I say we have zoology, we have botany, we have ecology but the umbrella term for that is biology. In the same way we have classification, we have identification, we have taxonomy, we have cladistic, we have uh, numerical taxonomy, we have phylogeny. 
all these are under the umbrella term known as systematics. So what is systematics? It is that particular branch of biology where we study the basis of classification or organizing organisms into different different categories so that it is easier to study the organism. Now when I say that we are arranging them in the categories that means we are going to associate or relate or distinguish them on basis of certain features. So those features could be the basic characteristic features we are considering. They could be of the similarity or they could be of the difference. So we consider a characteristic and on basis of that characteristic we decide where to put which organism. Now where to put when I say where to put under the systematics we have a category known as classification. Now inside classification it is the order into which the things would be arranged. The order in the arrangement order rather I would say. So and then there is another term known as taxonomy. Omi, classification, systematics, this word is taxonomy. So we have a word coming out taxon. Now what is a taxon? Now to make you better understand this concept, I am going to give you an example of library. Now a library is having a lot many books, supposedly you go to some huge library, you see many books but it is easier for any reader to find any book inside the library instead of getting baffled by the number of books over there. Why it is easier? Because it has been arranged. Now consider a bookshelf supposedly, there are sections in library, the entire library whosoever does the arrangement let that be classified as systematics, whosoever does the arrangement considering that the literature books are to be kept at one side, science books are to be kept at one side, reference ones are to be kept at one side, just an example I am citing. Now uh, the, considering that you go to one section, history section supposedly, over there you find many bookshelves. Now in the bookshelves you see that some part is medieval history, some part is ancient history, some part is modern history. So that composition where you have differentiations is taxon. So basically Taxon could be any level in the classification where you can put the organism. So basically when we use the term taxon, the taxon is that level or that category which acts as one unit according to which the classification is done. So there are certain characteristics, there are certain characteristics in classification which put the organism into an individual taxon or the respective taxon and the study on basis of which the classification is made that is known as taxonomy. I hope I am clear that first of all we have systematics that is the umbrella term. Then we have classification. Classification is the study or the arrangement of particular organisms according to the affinities or differences into certain classes or categories I would say and those categories individual category would be taxon. Now how those categories are made that study would comprise the taxonomy. So we come across three terms over here one is systematics other is classification and third is taxonomy. I hope I am quite clear with what I try to explain is that systematics comprises both classification and taxonomy. Systematics when it is being uh, studied as for the classification, we are going to find taxonomy inside it because taxonomy would deal with the taxons and taxons are nothing but the various levels according to which classification is being done and various criteria which divide the classification basis, the classes into which the organisms are divided that is known as taxonomy. Now when we have come across these terms, we come across another uh, concept that is arranging the organism. So we have systems of classification, further we are going to read how many types of classification systems have been devised, who were the pioneers in those, we are going to get across like you are doing historical study, you will have to remember few names of the scientists, what they had done, how they had done, how they arrived to that consequences. But before going over there, one term I need you to get introduced to that is phylogeny. Okay. Now, in case you know what is phylogeny, it is good. In case you don't know, then again it is good because phylogeny is the basis of classification or you can say the uh, phylogenetic scientists or the phylogenetic classification has the evolutionary basis. 
You see, when the study started about classification, there was not much of uh, knowledge about evolution. Okay, but Ernst Haeckel was the first one who gave the thing recapitulation theory. We are going to see the chronological developments, but before that, we need to know the terms, and uh, you are getting introduced to the terms itself. Phylogeny considers evolutionary basis as the main crux of classification. All right. Earlier, what was uh, considered as uh, the classification criteria was that the evolutionary stances were not taken into account. Instead, the cytological evidences could be taken or you can say the natural affinities were taken. So, we had uh, the natural system of classification that was present. Later on, it was replaced by phylogenetic system of classification which go is into uh, which is uh, in vogue at present to in present in present scenario when we talk about classification we have to consider the phylogenetic relationships because uh, the earlier classifications at the time of those classifications there was not much known about evolution but as the evolutionary studies uh, surfaced it came into the knowledge of most of the people that because of the evolutionary affinities, it is better to classify the organisms and that classification is more accurate one as compared to the previous one. Now, I think this is enough for understanding how can we tackle the enormous diversity of life. There is, believe me, enormous diversity and all thanks to the systematics, we are able to deal with that much uh, diversity and there is a plethora of books which deal with these uh, evolutionary bases as well as the other criteria which classify the organisms into various taxons. So, for now, what you need to understand and learn as well is what is systematics, why do we study classification and what is the difference between these terms and how they can be used to tackle the enormous diversity of life.